terrible news. After missing a checkmate in one, a checkmate in two, plundering a queen, and getting many more question marks, chess.com brought my rating back to 100. The lowest rating you can have. Before sending my lawyers and getting my rating back to 2400, I've decided to play three games against the lowest rated player of the platform. And what happened was quite hilarious. Okay, I'm playing James L. Ukba. Okay, I play e4. I want to try to see if they know the scholar mate. Okay, I will start with the most tricky way. Queen to h5. I'm now attacking this pawn. Oh, wow. And I just go out with the knight and you're attacking my queen. That's very smart. Now I take here with check and let's see how they cover up this check. With the queen or with the bishop? I have the feeling they will... Okay, I wanted to say they will do with the queen. But no, they do with the bishop. And now, after all, I have a queen at the center of the board. And my... Huh? Okay. This was quite unexpected. Uh, game ended in three moves. They lost a pawn and I couldn't handle the pressure anymore. Alright, new game. Okay, we were playing a 395 Lil Burnout. I hope they didn't burn out. Uh, from US. And there we go. We go E4. I want to bring my pieces out like very quickly again. Let's see if they play E5. Usually, I think one of the best opening is exactly to go with E4, E5 as a beginner because you learn lots of tactical ideas, lots of strategical ideas. For example, there are all the traps related to the king getting checkmated anyway queen h5 i think this is a very challenging move and uh, i want to see how player are facing this i'm attacking this pawn and also looking at f7 which is the most weak point ever invented in a chessboard because this pawn is just protected by the king and so if i can double up my attack and take here with the queen i'm giving checkmate in just a few moves a uh, little burnout is also not playing move. I hope the game will not out board. I think they are just thinking because this is a very strong move. Well, not really strong, it's a tricky move. And they defended a pawn with the queen. This is very smart. Okay, I will play in this case knight here. I'm attacking one more time this pawn. Let's see how they are going to deal with it. This move is not perfect because you see my queen, my queen doesn't have a way to go back. So if they play really precise, they can attack my queen so many times. I love this move. Oh my god. This move is so good because it's, it's not just protecting this pawn, but it's also opening up the diagonal to this bishop. Meaning that already those squares, well those three squares, are not accessible to my queen. Okay, okay. I want to play this move, giving a check and see how they are going to defend a check. The best way would be to play probably the move c6, attacking my bishop and winning a tempo. And they, are, they do that. Oh my god. This is the strongest 395 rated player I've ever seen in my life. Okay, now we are attacking one more time here. It's not really a big deal because this pawn is well protected by the queen and the king. So honestly, I think that knight of six must be played is simply developing a piece attacking my queen and also looking at this pawn so it's a very strong move let's see if my opponent plays it they're thinking also g6 might be a move i have the feeling that players really like to push pawns uh okay yes they like to push pawns <laughs> um attacking my bishop so of course i need to go back here keeping my bishop on this diagonal here sometimes there are some tricks imagine this pawn getting here then the bishop would be trapped because there is no square to go so very important to be careful about this trick at the beginning so a move like a5 could be a move that i expect again beginners really like to push pawns uh which is not always bad but usually you should try to push two pawns at the beginning like usually uh, pawn E and D, and then develop all your pieces. So do not push too many pawns at the beginning. Now the knight is going out, but towards the side of the board. And we know that knights at the center of the board are much stronger, just because they have, they are controlling many more squares. Okay, okay. 
this knight wants to go here. I know that. And you know what? I think I will castle here. I'm also considering going for the center immediately with such a move. And you know what? I will do this. I will go for the center immediately and I will do a gambit. So now I think my opponent will immediately take because this is what players like to do. Every time there is a piece to capture, they capture. Then when you get stronger and stronger, you understand that uh, we are not playing checkers and you don't have to take. So you have to understand, is bringing me something to capture this piece? If not, you shouldn't capture as a rule of thumb. Will... Oh my god, this comes as a big surprise. The knight goes here attacking absolutely nothing. Yes, because this pawn, uh, these pawns are protected by my bishop. The knight cannot go here, cannot go here. So I think it's a very good moment to say, Hello, what are you doing here, knight? How is your life? Yeah, now they will enter in a middle crisis, middle age crisis. Ooh, okay. I think like they wanted to go for their idea. I'm not sure if they saw that this is hanging at this point because you shouldn't trade a knight three for a pawn one. Oh, we'll simply take there. Yes. And now my bishop is no longer in this strong diagonal, but who cares? Yeah, I have the one of my coach also told me that you shouldn't move the same piece more than once in the opening. So once you developed your knight, well, you developed in a very bad square. But anyway, you should try to move other pieces. So what my opponent did, knight here, knight there, knight there. Well, it's three moves, so three tempos that you use to then lose your knight. So do not do that. Rather, move all the other pieces as well. This bishop somewhere here, maybe. And maybe g6, bishop out. This is the fianchetto. Uh, I love that. Okay. I'm going to castle. This is a thing that you also need to do absolutely in the opening. Castle as quick as possible. Anyway, I have the feeling my opponent understands a bit about defense attack because they played the quick queen e7 defending the spawn. But now they are not following the principles. So if Lil Burnout would know just a few rules, they would be so much stronger. Uh, like push the pawn in the center, Develop all your pieces once at a time, castle your king. They didn't follow any of these rules right now. Okay, my queen is under attack and I will play the move queen to g5. Now I'm offering a trade of queen. The two queens are staring at each other. Will they be traded or will they stay on the board? Will my opponent trade the queens or not? Do they like to play with the queens or are they scared to lose the queen? When I started playing chess, I always wanted to keep the queens on the board. Because I knew just how to checkmate my opponent. Oh wow, that's a funny move. I like to keep the queens on the board. But now I've evolved a little bit and I think that I'm also able to play end games. I was literally terrified about end games. So now I'm going to trade the queens and prove to myself that I'm not anymore that kid that at eight years old started playing chess and was scared about everything. She just wanted to give checkmate to their opponent in uh, as few moves as possible. And don't go absolutely to an endgame. Okay, my opponent took with the king. And that's a very smart move. Because if they take with the knight, they are forgetting about this poor bishop that is alone and can be taken by my bishop. So very good move here. And uh, it comes as a surprise, honestly. Because usually beginners cannot see, don't have a vision that goes very far away. They see threat like very close, but they don't see very far away threats. So, uh, very good by Lil. I'm taking here, uh, I'm taking a pawn in the center. This bishop is protected by my rook, so I don't have to worry. And now, after my opponent takes, I can take back with my knight and I win a pawn. And I'm also attacking this. That would be a fork, so many good things might happen. Now, again, my opponent, even if I am like three pawns up already, well, three pawns up, actually I'm a piece up because I won the knight, my opponent should try to bring their pieces out as quick as possible. Especially in low-rated players game, being plus three, plus five doesn't really matter. What matters is how strong your pieces are at the moment. And those pieces are not really strong. Uh, so black needs to find a way to make the best out of them. And imagine a bishop here, uh, this knight may be go towards strong square maybe here a knight at the center of the board this would be really nice 
of course now the knight cannot go here because this knight would take but anyway all in all would be important to bring all the pieces out i don't know why my opponent is not taking here immediately this seems like a very obvious move uh, but maybe they are looking that my knight is going there and the knight is nearly getting an upgrade level up because okay this move is a huge surprise okay now i want to test my opponent and see if king takes was a smart move or was a lucky move i'm taking here giving a check and again do they take with the knight losing this bishop or do they take with the king keeping this bishop protected this is a very important test let's see do they take with the king or with the knight do they lose this bishop or do they not lose this this bishop anyway if they take with the king i can really maybe uh well i should bring out all my pieces so i should still develop wow they take with the king that's absolutely cool they have a vision they know that they need to co-protect this bishop okay i will bring a knight out and now they are starting to be under time pressure just three minutes for them what are they going to play here maybe bishop out or trading here finally okay they go back with the king this is also a very smart move and now guys every time that the king is naked at the middle of the board uh, you need to open up the piles so i want to go for this but i know that my opponent will close the center so what else can i play okay i will improve my knight i'm going towards the square taking attacking a free pawn now let's see what is the vision of my opponent will they let me take here which means check and i win the rook or will they push what happens here this is very important a very important moment uh, one good move would be to cover to protect the pawn with the king so you're hiding your king you're doing two things at once protecting this pawn and hiding your king but it's not an easy move to play and my opponent plays the move g5 which doesn't just pr doesn't protect his pawn but also doesn't do absolutely anything yeah this pawn is pushing one square forward and then you're pushing even more and even more and then you're getting captured so this move honestly i don't understand maybe the only reason could be to block my bishop from the possibility to capture their bishop and then to have the possibility to bring the knight out but generally yeah this bishop now is blocked by the pawn so it's not really an active piece so not a good move and anyway they blundered a pawn and a rook and this is like big 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 trouble what's my opponent doing moving the king of course they need to move the king and now guys we are getting in a position where you need to try to give checkmate and how do you win such a position i am plus nine i have a rook and a piece and an extra pawn so it's really lots of material but there is a problem because this knight is not going back the knight cannot go back because this square is controlled by the bishop of course so i need to find another way so now i will take this pawn because it's free the king will take and i will take another pawn i know i lost a piece but i took two pawns for it which is not very bad plus this knight is really strong imagine a knight getting there this would be a rook completely trapped that's why my opponent absolutely needs to go out with the knight but still is not yeah the problems are not ending here because now i'm attacking the knight and the bishop at the same time this means that my opponent is losing again another piece i want to see how i mean this would be wow i was about to say this would be a resignation at high level i want to see what my opponent does and they just resigned they understood that there is no longer a chance here okay very cool let's do one more game i'm playing slush zay and okay d4 this is like a, a surprise i think that many players like to play the movie four but might be that my opponent plays the london system because it's a very easy opening to play okay i want to try something i will go with the night out okay i will play wow they are pre-moving even okay i am confused okay i will play d5 let's play symmetrical i think they actually don't really know the theory here and you're just developing the pieces in this case i will play the queen's gambit with opposite colors so i'm playing the move c5 and offering a free pawn the idea is that after my opponent takes 
I'm going to develop this knight and to push for the center. So I will have two pawns in the center very strong. This is one very basic idea of the Queen's Gambit. My opponent already played a move. That's a very good move, actually. Because if I push in the center, then this pawn is hanging. Because after pushing this pawn, the knight, my knight here is pinned. Meaning that I cannot move my knight. If not, I lose the queen behind. But let's calculate. If I play this move, knight takes, I can take still with my queen. Queen takes and I take back with my knight. And I don't really lose a pawn, I actually win a piece. But after e5, my opponent can first take the knight and then take this pawn. So I need to be careful here. So I have several options here. Either I push or I push here or I develop this bishop here. I'm not really a fan of this move because I'm blocking my pawn to move on. So I'm really looking at the move uh, d4, taking more space in the center. But it comes to a price because this pawn will be vulnerable there. For example, this, the knight goes here, attacking this pawn for one, two, three times. And I'm protecting just two. At that point, I could play the move e5, protecting the pawn one more time. And also, actually, wait a second, I can play simply the move e4 because after knight b5, there is queen a4 check i'm giving a check and i'm winning the knight so this is already a very nasty move where is this knight going and this problem comes from the fact that my opponent oh, oh my god my opponent didn't put the pawns in the center and they took here by leaving the center basically unattended Okay, e4. This is a free piece, which honestly, I think I can't stop myself from taking. This is a pawn for the knight, and it's a great deal. I know that the queens can be traded, but who cares? Um, oh, wow. My opponent doesn't want to trade the queens and so decides to lose another pawn. And I'm also attacking the rook. And I'm just one step from promoting. And now I will go all in. Queen check. And my next move is to take here, attacking the rook and promoting another pawn. This is how things can go bad really quick. Now I'm taking here and the rook is down. It's lost forever. My opponent needs to sacrifice the rook. Now, do I really want to take the rook? I'm thinking about giving the check because I can take the rook also later. But you know, the problem with check is that there is the strong bishop c1 covering the check and protecting the rook. So I know I cannot give a checkmate so quickly. I need to take the rook. Anyway, again, plus eight, a very good advantage. Now I'm a bit scared that my opponent will resign. Um, I'm starting to see that the king is in this D file. So imagine if I can bring a rook here. Imagine if I can long castle with checkmate. That would be absolutely nice. Okay, let's see what we can do here. First of all, this is a free knight that we can simply take and say thank you very much. Oh, uh, but do we have anything better? I'm thinking about knight here. I mean, honestly, this is a free piece and we have to take that. This is like very basic chess. If you learn those three things, develop your pieces, castle your king, and take the free pieces that your opponent will offer, you will get at least 800 rating. If you can do just these three sim simple things, just that. It's not as simple. I mean, the rules are simple, but doing this, it's not that simple. Anyway, bishop out. I'm attacking the queen and the king. There is a move to defend. Is the move f3. Let's see um, if my opponent sees it. If not, they lose the queen. So they need to see that move. And they do that. And now it's time to go for my idea. Long castle with check. This is a very late move. Really nice. And now I'm trying. Okay, guys, I want to do a test, a huge test. I have the feeling, I know this is crazy, but I have the feeling that I believe that beginners do not see pieces that move very, very far away. So I will play queen check here. Let's see. Will my opponent. I told you the queen was hanging and they didn't take. There is this blind spot. When there is an attack from very far away, they do not see it. They do not see it. They simply don't see it. That's absolutely incredible. 
Okay. And now I will push this pawn. I, I'm not... I'm still leaving the queen hanging. Will they now see after one move? That is not... I'm not giving a check. I'm giving a second chance. Will my opponent take the queen? No! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> they still don't take the queen. Okay, I will leave that queen there forever. I think also one problem is that it's very hard to see the piece going backwards. Usually wants to want to go with the piece uh, forward, right? And that's what my opponent is doing. Taking my bishop right now. All right, my queen is still hanging. Okay, I will go backwards with my bishop and now I'm threatening some discovery checks. Still my queen is hanging over there. Let's see what my opponent is going to play here. I have the feeling they must see that the queen is hanging. They must see at some point. It has to be. Maybe now they see, they start to think. I wanted to provoke the move here, but then I think it's obvious that they see that the bishop can go there. A bit. Wow! They moved the bishop! They moved the bishop, but they didn't take the queen, but just took the knight. That's absolutely incredible. All right. I think I can go for something very nice. I will go for this crazy check here. And I'm preparing something absolutely beautiful. Let's see if you can spot it before it happens on the board. I'm giving a check with this bishop and the king cannot move in many squares. There are basically, yes, and my opponent chose the worst one. There were three possibility. After pawn here, I have check, the king moves here, and after knight there, my opponent needs to sacrifice the queen. Um, another move that can be played is e5, but anyway, I have the same idea, check, king here, knight there. And my opponent played the worst move because this is checkmate. I hope you enjoyed these three games with lower rated opponent. I think three things that you need to remember is develop your pieces, castle the king, and take the piece that your opponent is attacking. Also, one final suggestion is the following. Every time your opponent make one move, make sure to ask yourself, what is the threat of this move? What do they want to do? This will avoid lots of blunders. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And you might want to check out how to get to 1000 rating. I reveal three secret steps to get there. Don't miss it out. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate that.